lovely people. I'm here once again and thank you for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Samira. We are still on our topic babyhood and our subtopic today is ignorance. Our key scripture is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. I'll read. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. Amen. My children are a bit grown up now and observing them as babies. I know this. A baby seems to think everything he gets his hands on is intended for his mouth. A new baby puts his hands in his mouth. And when they grow a little older and learns to crawl across the floor, if he finds a screw, it goes into his mouth. If he finds a spoon, it goes into his mouth. If he finds a spider, it goes into his mouth. Babies are ignorant concerning these things. They don't know what should go into their mouths and what shouldn't. And babies have died as a result of not knowing that. They have gotten hold of something poisonous and it killed them. What am I getting to? The same thing is true spiritually speaking. We need to be careful what goes into our spiritual mouths. We need to be as careful about what we read as we are about what we eat physically. Christians many times think nothing at all of gobbling down some poisonous doctrine which will poison their spiritual life, rob them of their spirituality and ruin their testimony if they accept it. My pastor tells me of a story where he used to go for evangelism with one spirit-filled brother. He said one day he saw this brother participating in a protest with a certain religion. He asked him and he said he's no longer a Christian. How do you think that came about? He ate or drank something he shouldn't have. The Bible says, let he that thinketh he stands, take heed lest he falls. Sometimes people veer off and go on to do their own thing and they say, God is doing something new nowadays. They are just off their rockets. But let me tell you, God is still concerned about saving souls. They just leave the fundamental truth of the doctrine of the word of God and go on to do something that doesn't amount to anything. Some things are actually poisonous in themselves. And some things, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference how you believe on them. They are simply not essential to salvation. And it won't make any difference whether you believe it or not. But too many times, Christians will feed on everything in the world except the right thing, and they will become poisoned. Then, they leave disciples off after themselves. If the Spirit of God is in it, He is concerned about there being unity. Did you notice in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13, it says, So we all come to the unity of the faith. That which will divide is not of the Spirit of God, it's of the devil. The Spirit of God never divides. Some so-called Christian books are so poisonous, you should be able to detect the poison in them and abstain from them totally. You may think, but there are Bible verses in these books, so surely they must be good to read. Certainly, if they didn't give some Bible verses, people would not read them. If you were going to poison a rat, it wouldn't just eat the poison. You have to put the poison on a good piece of cheese to get the rat to come and eat. The devil will use some good scriptures to get you to eat it, but he will put a little poison on it. Be careful what you read. Don't read everything you can get your hands on. Unless you are a fully matured Christian and able to rightly divide it, it will be best not to read such things. These religious books will hinder your faith, your belief in God. It would have been better for you not to build those materials into your inner conscience. They will take faith out of you instead of putting it inside you. Be careful what you feed upon. There is a saying used in the area of man's natural diet. You are what you eat. The same thing is true spiritually. You are what you read. May the peace of God that passes all understanding be with us all. Amen. If you are watching and you are not a born again and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. God is saving your life today. Dear Lord Jesus, Please forgive me of my sin. Have mercy upon me. I come to you, Jesus, just as I am. Make me your child 
Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Make me a new person. Thank you, Jesus, for reaching me and for saving me. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me and you think you need further guidance, please send me an email. My email is in the description box below. Thank you all for taking time to listen. God bless you. Now, let's do this weekend thing. Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to the cooking session. Thanks for sticking around. <clears throat> so today, we are going to make some fish gravy. Yes, fish gravy. If you're watching me and you're not a guy in fish gravy is not the one they eat with mashed potatoes or sunday rolls to know it's different so before we get into it i want to show you how um i clean my fish so this is snapper red fish here yeah? how i clean it without my kitchen being like you know um a medicine yeah like you know when the csi when they come <laughs> they will find um, they can use the scales that they find in my kitchen to determine how it was killed or even how it was caught yeah so yeah how i clean my fish is i fill my sink with water and with a spoon i sort of like take out the scales descale it under the water just as i cut my um, onions really so i descale it inside the water so that all the scales that will fly about will all stay in the water yeah, so as you can see me do, or, at, uh, or as you saw me do, yeah, I scraped everything under the water. I just killed it under the water. And at the end, all the scales will be just in your sink. You can just, just chuck them in the bin. So, yes, one easy way of, yeah, not splattering your kitchen with all these scales, yeah. So now let's get into it. So before um, I've prepared my fish, I've cut it everything. And I'm coming to marinate it with um, my fish spice. This fish spice, um, I brought it from Ghana. I bought it from Medina Market. I don't know how it's made. I don't know what it's made with here. Yeah, but yeah, so what I do is I just add some salt to it and mix it. Then um, I sprinkle, sprinkle it over my fish. And then, yeah. I will just sort of toss it around so that it goes everywhere. Um, I'd like to use my hands, but here they are little, little bones and it can, you know, I don't want trouble. So I just sort of toss it around in a bowl like that. And then I leave it to marinate for a bit, for say half an hour in the fridge. Then I fry. So before I fry, just sprinkle some flour into the oil so that, um, yeah, it reduces splatter really. And yeah, it makes the fish also um looks uh, nicer you know it's not like really coated with flour just, i don't want it to to be too much i don't i don't want there to be too much flour in my stew so just a little flour so that it looks coated but it still hasn't got so much um flour on it yeah so just as you can see i'm just frying it away and um once it's done i will go into a stew later so it's, it's stew later it's our gravy later yeah gravy we are making gravy yeah so um this gravy this particular gravy um i make it um very often uh yeah i make it when i'm in a very good mood <laughs> i don't want to eat yam yeah it goes very well with yam and i love it with yam so here actually you can eat it with some rice but i normally eat it with yam always eat it with yam so my fish is ready and we are going to go into making the gravy yeah so just scoop it or, or put it on the kitchen towel so that it sort of absorbs all the oil so here it goes in our um, sunflower oil it's about say two to three tablespoons sunflower oil and i put in my bay leaf and my chopped onions go into it and you just fry it for a bit it's gra gravy it won't it's a quick one it needs to cook um you know doesn't need to cook through and through so it's just a bit of like a little frying here and there yeah to make everything nice and fresh so my pepper has gone in and here goes in my um spot my blend my nisi onions ginger blend yeah and i've added my um spice cubes okay 
so i'm going to let it all dissolve in there and here i've added my homemade tomato sauce so my homemade but because it's gravy gravy you normally have to chop the tomatoes but i want my homemade tomato sauce in so i use that and i also use a can of chopped tomatoes so you can also just chop um your own tomatoes and add it in so that you have those chunk tomatoes in it because gravy has gravy has that kind of you know chunkiness and freshness in it so you can just add that but for just convenience i just used um, a tin of chopped tomatoes here yeah? so yeah you let it simmer for a bit and um here i covered it and so that will just simmer so here you see this simmered nicely so i'll just be spicing it with some other stuff yeah so here goes in my fish powder this is not fish powder this is um shrimp powder yeah so shrimp powder then um salt to taste then um be careful with the salt because there will, there's salt in the fish so if you're not careful you get salty gravy so just be careful with the salt here and here i'm putting in some black pepper so i'm just you know sort of mailing some black pepper into it a bit of curry powder so here actually the spices it's not anything planned it's just mix mix sort of you know spices yeah and some basil because it goes well with tomatoes i say that all the time so yeah some basil, some basil in there to make to complete the whole thing yeah so once you stir everything make sure everything is nicely mixed and you let it um simmer for a few moments then you put in your fish so this doesn't take long at all the only bit that takes long is the scaling of the fish the cutting and there but then putting it together as a gravy is really quick very very quick so yeah so just put in your fish and um there's a reason for using such you think oh that is a small pot yeah oh yeah i use that because i don't want to be stirring the stew because i have a tendency of stirring the stew i will stir to like you know i will stir the hell out of the stew yeah but with the gravy if you stir too much you might break um the fish and the fish will break into pieces so i use like sort of a compact sort of saucepan so that i don't i fill it up with the fish and i don't have to stir it that much so that is why it feels it feels like it's filled up or something yeah that is the reason so yeah take it easy right there so yeah our gravy is finished and i just garnished it with some spring onions and that is it and you serve it with some yam or rice or banku kinky it goes it can go with everything i tell you potatoes you boil it you fry it anything and this one was sweet hey they still was sweet papa sweet when i say sweet you know you understand sweet so yeah please try it and yeah it's lovely and this is my bowl actually this is the one i actually ate i started eating and i said oh let me take a photo of it yeah so thanks for stopping by and yeah please don't forget to subscribe like and share god bless you all and i'll see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.